The Blacklist has been such an enormous uh, breakaway here. It's one of the top rated shows on US TV. How's it doing in London? Uh, it's doing very well. It's oh, also good. very popular in, in the UK. <laughs> I mean, internationally, why do you think it has struck such a chord with audiences? Uh, I think there's um, a great premise and there's a lot of chemistry between my character and James Spader's character, Raymond Reddington. What's your theory on their relationship? Do you think he is her father? I don't have a theory on the relationship. I know what the relationship is. Oh, you is. do know? Yeah. That's <laughs> because um, some fans want them to be together romantically, but then some think he's her father, so it's all very... Yeah, people yeah. have very confusing feelings about the relationship. I think that's interesting. I, th I think that even people don't really understand why they feel what they feel about Raymond Reddington and Elizabeth Keene. And um, so, no matter what happens throughout the story, I think they'll always feel a little bit gratified and a little bit disappointed and all the things that are um, just really multi-dimensional reactions that you have to a great story. The first season ended with the task force being decommissioned, so mm -hmm. going into season two, do you think it's going to be a relaunch for the Blacklist? Come on. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> uh, I think so. I think that um, you, you have so many different... Uh, I don't know what they're going to do, to be honest. I don't know how they're going to do it. I know the writers are in the uh, writer's room for the last couple of weeks hacking it out and finding the best way possible to tell the story in the second season and really follow up um, the success and kind of the, the mystery that they've created for the first season and um, yeah I think we I think we got some some really good cards to play this, this season kind of. I think that we set it up and at the end of our season with the circumstances that made it so that we couldn't move forward in the same way in season two. So we're going to have to find new ways of storytelling within the context of these characters and storylines that you know we don't really have the options we, we had before, which is dynamic storytelling. I think that whenever you push yourself into um, a situation and then have to find a way to tell the story through that situation, to get out of that situation, that's when people like to watch. Another huge game changer in the finale was the death of Mira. Did you see that coming? Was that a, a shocker for you? Did I see it coming? No, no, I didn't see it coming. It was one of those things that just kind of happened where you were reading it going, oh my God. So uh, it was a, a big disappointment to lose Parmen there. She was a, a real sweetheart and she's a great person and a, an incredible actor. But at the end of the day, it's. Um, we, we live in an age where everybody's expendable and, and um, you know, Game of Thrones really threw a monkey wrench into that. But as an actor, you really have to be on your toes and you never know when, you're, when your uh, card is going to get punched and you, you, you want to go out swinging. The Blacklist has landed the big post-Super Bowl slot uh, for 2015. I know. And those episodes are always enormous. Do you think that's going to be just the biggest Blacklist episode we've ever seen? Well, yeah, it's going to be the most incredible Blacklist episode. Um, because they're working on it now and they're formulating the whole season around it. We have such a great platform with that and the network and the studio have supported us along the way. They've done an, an incredible job of you know, putting the money where the mouth is and saying, we believe in the show and we think it's magic and this is why you should too. And, and we've, we've done some incredible work in New York because they, they believe in the show so much. We're gearing up to make a feature film essentially of the blacklist that'll be two parts the first part will air right after the super bowl and the second part will air in our new u.s time slot um at 9 p.m on thursdays so it's sort of this transition to a new place on the network in the united states and uh so they're gonna really really amp it up for that one i think that it's gonna be like ansel garrett on speed or something <laughs> <laughs>